Hello everybody and today we're talking about gender non-conforming. So today in How to Help Your Transgender Teen, we're going to be covering the topic of gender non-conforming. So what is gender non-conforming? Well, gender non-conforming is where someone does not follow society's expectation of their biological sex. Simples! Where's that meerkat sound? Isn't it like... No, it's... How... how simples? Is it like that? I don't know. Something like that. So gender non-conforming kids don't have it easy. There are boys that don't like getting dirty, don't want to do rough and tumble stuff, and would rather play with dolls. And there's girls who just want to be one of those like hardcore boys like girls. Don't mind getting their hands dirty, don't mind getting scratches and bruises, and just want to get all like Grr. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. Okay. Gender non-conforming kids like to dress up as the opposite sex. This may be in day-to-day -day life, or it may be in fantasy play. Gender non-conforming boys get teased a lot. They get bullied for having a effeminate voice, or having mannerisms that the stereotypical female would have. Gender non-conforming girls have it more easier, because they can fall into their society's box of tomboy. They can be adventurous, and parents are usually very fair and happy with their child being a tomboy, and they're fine with all that a lot. And they don't really expect anything else to come to it, and when that girl reaches adulthood, they'll be a proper woman. You know, proper classy and, yeah, not like a tomboy. But again, with the gender non-conforming boy, parents always feel like their child is going to be bullied throughout their childhood. When I was growing up, there was a lot of people in my primary school that would fall under the gender non-conforming kind of category. You know, people these days use the term as either gay or camp, not really knowing their proper meaning. And they always got bullied quite a lot during primary school, and they probably still get bullied these days, but I don't really know because I go to college. But I know even at college people get bullied for being effeminate and not really following society's expectations on what a boy and a girl should be. Now, my personal views on boy and girl is a whole new debate and we won't cover that in this video. Shame, I know, I bet you're crying. But I know a lot of parents are either proud of their child to be effeminate and they support them through everything, or they usually are like, you should not do that you must fit into it, and you can't be whatever bad word, I don't know. What, how far can I go on this channel without upsetting people? I don't know, honestly. Gender non-conforming kids have a strong sense of not fitting in. At the age where boys usually play with boys and girls usually play with girls, gender non-conforming kids, teens, whatever, usually play with the opposite sex. So if it's someone who's born male, they'll play with someone who was born female. Gender non-conforming boys are usually looked down on. They are usually bullied and made to feel bad to be uh, feminine. I see a lot of this. I, I go around everyday life and I see a lot of boys that are quite feminine, but even in the high street, they might be with their parent and the parent will be like, no, you can't like that. You should not like that. You're a boy. You should like what you are meant to like. And that really does annoy me. I just want to go over there and be like, Do you know what? You're being really rude. Let them like what they like. But I don't because I'm quite a nice person. Yeah. Gender non-conforming are at high risk of being looked down on. And it's horrendous how bad it is. And they can suffer depression, social isolation, and even go to the far steps of attempting suicide and possibly dying. Gender non-conforming kids are uh, at a very high risk of ending up being part of the fabulous world of LGBT. Do -do 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 the more stronger the gender non-conforming child is, 
they are more likely to end up to be trans because it's very often if a child is gender non-conforming throughout their childhood they will end up as transgender in some aspect maybe gender fluid gender non-binary or transsexual you don't have to be gender non-conforming throughout your childhood to be transgender you can be transgender and just not show signs you might fear to show the signs for the fear of rejection or to be disowned or just to be hated by family and elements such as like religion and love interests can also affect your gender identity and you may doubt yourself but deep down you do know if you are trans or not but it's very likely if your child is gender non-conforming or was or has been gender non-conforming they're going to end up as being transgender a gender non-conforming boy usually signs of having a dislike for a penis they might sit down while urinating and a gender non-conforming girl might want to have their hair short they might want to wear boy underwear they might want to run round without a top on at an age where it's not even appropriate and probably will one day think they will grow up to be a man gender non-conforming girls also have a fear of developing breasts and they will not celebrate having their first period or periods to come in that time gender non-conforming boys feel like they should cover their chests up all time even if they're going to the pool they might want to wear a t-shirt over the top of them just because they think that's what should happen because society expects girls to do that okay i hope this is making sense i really do if these signs carry on throughout their entire childhood and teenhood and everything the chances are they're going to come out as transsexual sooner or later or something else underneath the trans umbrella so what i want you to do now is to look back at your child's past do you remember any time when these gender non-conforming stereos are played with your child. Look back in like pictures and family information, then there would have been signs that were not clear at all. I'm going to show you a photo of my childhood now. This photo was taken when I was quite young. I'm not sure how old I was in this photo. The photo is of me having a face paint of flowers on my face. Now you might be like, oh that's okay, it's kind of cute and adorable for a boy to have their face painted with a non-superhero Spider-Man, Batman kind of face paint. Signs like this aren't seen by parents to be like, oh my child's going to grow up as trans, oh no, my rest of my parenthood's going to be with a trans child. It's not always seen as that. They probably don't even see this as a sign of being a small thing related to the big thing of gender non-conformity. So back to me. <laughs> it's a great image, I know. But some of the signs, as I did say earlier, are not as clear as this. They might just come out of the blue from being a girly girl to be the most masculine girl you've ever seen. And then they might go too far as say that they are transgender. And all I can say is for when that does happen, just support them. That's all you can really do. You can't reject them. You can reject them, but it's not wise to do that. On your behalf, it's not wise to reject them. So you must, must, must support them and just face every challenge possible to make it a better life for them and for you. So on that note, thank you guys for watching. And remember, as always, like, comment, and subscribe. See you guys in the next video <sighs> good bye